For those that have not seen Michael Saylor's recent idea, he believes there is a very viable path, and I agree, for a bank somewhere in the world to begin issuing what he calls digital money, essentially digital dollars held in a bank account. The idea starts with the basic structure of a traditional bank balance sheet. A bank has assets and liabilities. The liabilities are customer deposits, meaning the dollars in your bank account, because the bank owes you those dollars. The assets are credit products, which include T-bills, mortgages, corporate bonds, and potentially digital credit as well. Sailor's idea is that digital credit can offer a very high yield while still functioning like most other credit products in that it is relatively stable. As a result, a bank, whether in the United States, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, or anywhere else, could offer a meaningfully higher interest rate on deposits. Instead of paying 3% on savings accounts, a bank could potentially pay closer to 8% by allocating a meaningful portion of the asset side of its balance sheet to digital credit. That digital credit would be a credit product issued by a Bitcoin treasury company. In practice, this is how banks already operate today. The only difference is replacing corporate bonds or mortgage-backed securities with a higher yield dollar-denominated digital credit product. The bank would still maintain cash reserves to absorb the volatility from these credit products and to meet customer withdrawals just like any normal bank. From a game theory perspective, this resembles a first mover advantage that evolves into what is called a coordination game. Any single bank is highly incentivized to move first because offering a structurally higher deposit yield immediately attracts capital. And banks want capital. Once one bank demonstrates that the model works, other banks face a clear strategic choice. If they do not adopt, they risk losing deposits and shrinking their balance sheets. If they do adopt, they can remain competitive. In that sense, once the first mover succeeds, following becomes the dominant strategy for the rest of the system. As a result, someone is eventually going to do this. Everyone wants a bank account that pays a higher yield, and one bank somewhere in the world is going to take this step. The first bank to do so would likely attract an enormous amount of capital, potentially billions or even trillions of dollars. That bank would gain a massive competitive advantage over nearly every other bank simply by offering a higher interest rate on deposits. At that point, it becomes less of a question of whether this happens and more of a question of when and where it happens. The implications for Bitcoin and Bitcoin treasury companies are significant. If banks begin allocating capital to digital credit, Bitcoin treasury companies become massive beneficiaries as issuers of those credit products. If Bitcoin treasury companies have a large, consistent buyer of their digital credit, that creates a substantial bid under Bitcoin itself because these companies issue digital credit and use the proceeds to buy Bitcoin. Over time, this dynamic could meaningfully increase capital flowing into Bitcoin through the traditional banking system. Ultimately, this appears to be a no-brainer for at least one bank in one country. The primary gating factor is regulatory approval someone deciding that this is acceptable. Once it works with one country, other banks and regulators would likely be forced to follow. Functionally, it is not very different from holding mortgage-backed securities or other non-sovereign credit products on a bank's balance sheet. If it works as expected, it has the potential to transform the entire banking system while simultaneously funneling large amounts of capital into Bitcoin. It may take time, but it seems like something banks should already be seriously evaluating if they are not already doing so. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.